on a stream like this. So I want to yes, make sure is. that our audio is fine. So if you guys have a shout out, um, we're being streamed on both our channels. So welcome, welcome everyone from Crypto Candor Alex's channel and my channel. Mm -hmm. um, and I think today we just said, um, let's talk about how we got started, what our passion is, and then what we think is going to be for the future for crypto. Um, and we're free to have some topics. And if you guys can uh, a stream, like uh, this. make sure. So I want to yes, make sure is. that our audio is fine. Second, I'm going to so have like you guys audio. have a shout out. Um, we're okay. So just had a minor hiccup. So we had a double right. just now. So okay. So I should be oh, okay. okay. Cool. So, well, Alex, so okay. <laughs> well, why don't, yeah, why don't you lead off and tell me kind of background information about how you got involved in this space initially? Okay, cool. So, uh, long story short, big, big gamer. Um, started in 2012, which is like super, super early. Um, yeah. But um, I started off basically um, having these PCs that I could mine with. So, um, basically, started. Um, found this like way to magically mine internet money. Um, and uh, I had three powerful PCs. So at that time, I was actually, um, you know, you know, like if you, when you bought games, uh, when you mm -hmm. run in, like a Diablo 3 bot, well, yeah, I'm guilty of that. Uh, that's me. Um, and then, <laughs> and then um, during downtimes, uh, when you get banned, uh, you decide, hey, you know what? I need some way to make money with my three PCs. And I decided to go Bitcoin mining. So at that time, um, 0.3 Bitcoin a day. Um, I still have uh, oh, wow. my records. Um, and it was only $10 for a Bitcoin. So it wasn't really that amazing. Um, my friends equip, um, you know, associated with picking up cans on the street. You probably make more money mm -hmm. picking up cans on the street. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got Bitcoin. That was pretty fun. Um, and I think my biggest regret was pretty much not like realizing the power of this earlier. Like I saw it, sure. I saw it as a way of payment, but it was so clunky back in the day. I, I, I kind of remember this too. Like um, you had to like sync the blockchain, uh, which took like many hours at that time. Um, I was <laughs> like, why? Why does it take three hours to sync a blockchain? Why is it so big on my computer? Um, so yeah, so I started off with mining focused and then... Uh, um, uh, lot, lot longer story short, um, you know, I got lots of Bitcoin and then I put it all in MT Gox, lost it there, uh, which is great. Um, and then uh, in 20, I think it was um, early 2017, I decided, you know what, <laughs> this crypto thing seems pretty cool. Uh, let me come back to it. Uh, so I actually started picking up the scraps. So back in the day, you have like mining pools and you can log into these sites. So I logged mm -hmm. back in. I'm like, dude, there's like 0.3 Bitcoin inside. Um, you know, back in the day, three dollars, I would have moved it. So there's like all these spare change I would collect, and then I, you know, got like one or two Bitcoins from different sites. I'm like, cool. Um, uh, so that was when I kind of restarted Bitcoin and um, probably started being the happiest time. Um, then I made a channel. I was like, hey, might, maybe I should talk to people. Um, you know, that, that'd be pretty cool. Like see what other people are saying about crypto. So started making a YouTube channel, um, initially with a mining focus, hence the name box mining. Um, but the community helped me a lot. Like we learned so much throughout these few years. It's just been ridiculous. All right. I'm having stream issues. Apparently you guys, if my stream cuts out again, just go over to Michael's channel to watch it. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not going to mess with it now because it's going to be too much to deal with. Um, pretty envious that you started mining that early on. Um, I can say that I'm actually a big gamer too myself. I always have been. Oh, really? But that definitely what wasn't. What do you play? Well, I grew up playing like Counter-Strike and like World oh, of Warcraft God, that's, 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 that's and like stuff hardcore, like that. Right? What do you play in World yeah. of Warcraft? Uh, I mean, I was in probably high school when I played. Um, it was like, and it wasn't very, it was a short stint that I played that mostly uh Counter Strike. My brother played in like leagues, so we Ooh. would go to different places, and he would play, and it was a lot of fun. So um, that's not why I got into crypto, but that's definitely why I was always into gadgets and technology, anyways. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for me, I just somebody owed me money. They paid me in Bitcoin. I had no idea how to 
how or what to do with it. And I left it on Coinbase because I was just not sure where to put it. And when I went back like a month later, it was worth more money. And I was like, well, this is kind of interesting. So um, let's figure this out. And so I fell down the rabbit hole. And I at first thought I was going to try mining. And I realized that I was just it wasn't worth it at that time because it was mm. 2017. It just didn't make any sense anymore. Um, and then I started trading, which was a terrible idea. And I'm a terrible trader. And then uh, I just decided I wanted to learn about the space and the projects. And because of that, I decided to make a channel. And I guess here I am. That's great. So, so someone yeah. paid you. So that that's a that's a great great start, right? Like, yeah. Um, when someone pays you in crypto, and and it's 2017, so it was right before the bull run. Then, so mm -hmm. like it wasn't really hot and popular back then, I guess. Um, um, how did you how did you learn about it? But like, did you find it intimidating when you first started? Like when you know there was yeah. all these like, private keys and <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, the, the whole private key thing that was that's what really got me because when they were like, okay, make an account on Coinbase and send me your wallet address. I'm like. This long string of numbers and letters is what you want me to send you. This sounds like this, is, this can't be right. So once I figured that out and then I was smart enough to buy a ledger pretty quickly after getting involved because I just figured to me having something physical to touch made it a little bit less scary for the fact that everything else was just intangible, right? So um, yeah, I mean, it was all very scary. And that's kind of why I made the channel is because I felt that there wasn't enough content like the content I'm making now, which is like middle of the road. I don't have a tech background. I'm not a professional. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a person who got involved that wanted to learn. I wanted to help other people learn. So that was kind of mm. the, the fact that crypto is intimidating was the reason the channel started, basically. Mm, yeah. And um, I felt like um, at that time, I think, um, so what, what roughly what time did you start like um, with your YouTube channel? My channel is about a year and a, a couple months old now. Mm, yeah. So, so back in the day, like, do you notice like a change in uh, um, the people in the space? Do you like a uh, um, in attitude as well, or um, in ideologies yeah. even? Like, do you see that shift happening right now? Uh, what's your kind of experience like? What I experienced in the beginning, I think, was a lot of people who maybe just because I was also kind of not very experienced as well, but it was a lot of people who who didn't really seem to understand the space. We're sort of in it for throwing a dart at an ICO and 10xing like that. It was all very um, monetarily based. And now from and there was a lot of like much more moon Lambo talk. Mm. And now um, it seems that there's a lot less moon Lambo, but a lot more actual solid conversations about fundamentals, adoption, real world use cases, like things that matter for long term um, adoption, I think. And I actually was just talking to K Dub from Crypto Zombie earlier, and he was saying that he feels like he's noticed kind of like a change in the sentiment. And I, I feel the same way that people seem to be less negative, and we've all sort of, mm. I guess, capitulated and agree, like, okay, well, yeah, the price isn't that great, but the space is still here. Like, we're all sort of getting over it. And I'm wondering if that kind of getting over it means that maybe we're turning a corner. I don't know. That's just kind of the way I feel. I definitely feel so too, like, especially these few months. Like we still see, um, like I think I think it's a a, a whole huge change, right? So when I first started, and why I wanted to want to talk about this was because when I first started, um, it was a very nurturing space. Um, mm -hmm. I think there just wasn't anyone talking about crypto. I think just like super early twenty seventeen ish, it was just like it was like uh, um, we had Amanda Johnson. Uh, who would yeah, the daily her. decrypt, and then she later hopped onto Dash. We had Omar, yeah. uh, who's um, also a great hero of mine. I'm just like, and yeah, then, he's and, awesome. then, and then we had um, all the Big Connect guys, um, <laughs> uh, like uh, Trayvon. What's his name? Tra Trayvon. Trayvon yeah. Trayvon James, Craig, Wright, uh, Craig Grant, um, Crypto Nick. Um, but that was around it. Like you can count it on uh, on the tip of your fingers. And I think a lot of times people were just like, you know, they were kind of like um, wanting more content, uh, which mm -hmm. was kind of pretty cool. Um, and then we got into this Moon Lambo phase, I felt, which was like everyone was smashing <laughs> up the memes. Memes were more important yeah. than factual information. Um, now we're moving. Then we got the anger phase, right, where uh, mm. regardless of what you talk about, people were angry at you. You got to piss off someone, right? Uh, whether it's the Ripple Army or the uh, <laughs> Ethereum guys or or anyone who is angry, and then now we are probably at the stage where I'm like you can, it's okay. The people who are still around, yeah. There are some really salty memes still floating around, um, uh, and you know people think that getting banned 
by other people or getting blocked by other people on Twitter is funny. Uh, we still have that a little bit now, but I think uh, we're going to move towards a more nurturing time soon. I think that's what I'm excited for. And that nurturing time is when I feel like um, that's when the market's going to change because uh, when, we're, when we're super negative, I feel like personally um, people are just waiting for um, – people are angry and also waiting for an opportunity to get out as well. Yeah. I think like that's um, that's pretty key as well. I think you have to remember that um, – for me personally, I felt um, a lot of people weren't prepared for it. E- even me, I think I, I, I kind of fell down that rabbit hole too where um, you, you feel like you're in God mode when you, you know, 10x. You're like, oh, this is the best thing in the world. Yep. Um, you know, I bought Ethereum at like 160. It went up to 1,000. It's going to go up to 2,000 for sure. Uh, but, you know, um, then you kind of fall down back to earth and say, you know what? Okay, that, that was a little bit too crazy. Um, and then you, you talk to quite a few OGs as well, and they're like, "Oh, uh, yeah, it's cashed out." Even, like even Charlie Lee was like, "Sold of my Litecoin." Probably. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I think I think I agree with you. I, I also think that a lot of the nature of the space is that it's a lot of young people who maybe didn't have a ton of experience in like you know traditional financial markets, so they don't understand that the kind of not that I do, but the kind of sustainability and the kind of growth that we were experiencing in the space was just not realistic. Like there was no way that we could continue to 10 X and 10 X all these projects all the time and just grow exponentially. And there not be some sort of recourse, a negative recourse behind that. So um, yeah, I agree that there's definitely, uh, I noticed, I think I came in at the end of the nurturing phase mm-hmm. right before it turned into like uh, kind of trolling one another. Um, Cause I was in a, there's a, a subreddit called the Bitcoin markets mm-hmm. And they actually made a Slack for just the people on that subreddit. And it was like the nicest group of people ever. And it still exists. They're, they're still out there. But they were the reason that they I started the channel because they were promoting me. They're like, you should do it. You should totally yeah, do it. I right. think it'll be good. Yeah. And everybody was like very like supportive of one another. And that's why I started. I was like, all right, cool. If these people, these random nice people on the internet think I should do it, I guess I'll do it. And uh, yeah, so I agree with you that they're there's been a change in the culture, I think for sure. Um, I would like to see it get back to the way it was when people were a little bit nicer to one another. Yeah, I think it's just, uh, um, you know, uh, just a little wait for a while. I think like uh, once we're kind of in a more stable period, I think people are going to be nicer, mm-hmm. especially I think at a certain point that tribalism. So we just had, um, uh, who was it saying? Just Dale Thomas saying, yeah, it's like, it seems very tribal. Like, once that tribalism subsides a little bit, once we've, once people know that tribalism doesn't work, um, because during the bull run, tribalism is one of the most effective ways of getting people noticed in the coin. Like, oh, this, these guys mm-hmm. are strong. Let's stick with them. Let's stick together as a team. Let's bash everyone else and pump, 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 pump. But um, once you, once in a bear market, it's always about building and making sure that there are products that deliver. Um, or there's some form of advancement. And I think um, we're, we're slowly, slowly getting you know, accustomed to that right now. So it's, it's yeah. good to see that change happening. There's tribalism in everything, though, unfortunately. I mean, if you think sports, if you think yeah, right. um, politics and anything, it's very divisive. That's the nature of it. And I think that's kind of just the way humans are wired, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But I'm hoping that because crypto is different, like the space is different, the people it attracts are different, and the mindsets a little bit different. I, I hope that it, it will be less tribal in the future. Hopefully. I mean, the, the, the biggest problem I see was that um, because crypto, um, there's a financial incentive to be tribal, um, even, even mm-hmm. in politics, right? So so what if you win a debate? Nothing happens, right? But in crypto, yeah. if you win a debate, you're like, that guy's shit. And you can steal their market cap, especially if they're competing in your, um, that kind of... Um, and, and a lot of times we have these like fake competitions going on, right? We think, oh, this coin's from China and that coin's from China. So they must be competitive. Mm-hmm. They must be competing with each other. Um, so so you feel like you can steal market cap or steal um, yeah. uh, people from other other coins. But um, you, you kind of realize that in reality, it's not the case, right? In fact, um, we're facing off the bigger enemy, which are, are the banks. You know, we just saw JP Morgan coin come in. <laughs> and and it got me yeah that's ridiculous um uh, it got me really um uh, focused um now on just uh, w- 
why we're in this space because um mm -hmm. you, you know we, we hear that the banks are messed up um uh, but uh honestly if you just start googling it like shit i just like google jp morgan fine and you're just like all these violations right violations like anti-money laundering uh we got hsbc group they were fined for basically money laundering for the mexican cartel they're directly supporting you know drugs and all the bad stuff they accuse crypto yeah. of like they're doing it but on, on a much bigger scale it's it's just like it's just crazy and and no one goes to jail for for the for it so they, they know they're doing it like all the middle management all the senior management everyone on the chain knows uh, they're not doing something that's legal but uh they go along with it whistleblowers they're not promoted they get ostracized mm -hmm. um and then uh at the end of the day you know they just become the biggest kind of launderer of money abuses like starts abusing their power then you realize okay this is why we're in crypto right this is why yeah uh, crypto we don't have that this is why decentralization matters because no one controls this network you can't like donald trump can't call like the president of bitcoin and be like hey look ban those accounts let's let's seize that money and let's take that for me or print more um that's the power of crypto um i think that's i think to me that's like um that re reignited a lot of like fire after just seeing jp morgan coin especially um they kind of validated the tech <laughs> that's kind oh of yeah absolutely there's so many you know bigger groups or corporations or banks, things like that, that have so much invested in crypto failing to see somebody like JP Morgan turn around and be like, yeah, like maybe we'll entertain the idea of it. All it did right. is like, like you said, validate it, give everybody a reason to believe, okay, we're on the right track. Not that I ever um, lost faith in the space because I didn't, like you said, taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, which is what the actual purpose of the technology is outside of the tribalism, outside of the projects, outside of thinking that if Two projects are from China that, you know, only one can succeed. Mm. If we move past all that, the whole concept of the space in general is so much bigger than what we talk about on Twitter. And we sometimes lose sight of that. But, you know, the JP Morgan thing definitely reminded us that it's here for a reason. And I certainly think at this point now we know for certain it's here to stay. Definitely, definitely. So um, so when you started, you, you were super um, uh, interested in it, I guess. Um uh, what do you believe in? So right, right now, have you ever encountered any issues with the banks or have you ever um, used crypto internationally? Like what's kind of your experience there? Well, I've never used crypto internationally, but I can say that, you know, through high school and college when I was not working, um, when I was working very, you know, dead end jobs, just trying to make ends meet because I was in school, I'd get hit with overdraft fees from the bank because whatever they they allow you to withdraw more money than you have and then they charge you for it. Um, you know, recently when Wells Fargo went down for like, you know, it was like it was like 48 hours. Nobody could use the ATMs. Nobody could use the machines. Nothing that affected me. So and I've seen, you know, other situations with banks, you loan money, the interest rates are high. People get themselves in situations that aren't ideal because it's all fueled by making ends meet, not so much about people or caring about the people that you're dealing with. And I guess I was just interested in it because it seemed like such a elusive concept, like digital money. You could store it on your computer. You could store it on a thumb drive, whatever. It, it just was, it was very intriguing. And I like to learn about things that I have absolutely no idea about. Like I have no background history on. So when I realized that there was something that I knew zero about, I was even more interested because of that. So I'd never heard of it. I'd never, like I'd heard of Bitcoin once or twice in passing, maybe in college, but I never Googled it, never put any thought into it. And then, um, you know, when it sort of fell into my lap, I'm like, all right, well, this seems like kind of like it's pushing me in this direction. So I'm going to go for it. Um, and I'm grateful that I did because, you know, I made the channel meeting a lot of really nice people doing cool things like live streams. So um, the space has benefited me in a lot of ways obviously mm -hmm. you know not just with more financial freedom cool right and and right now you do um you do quite a lot of things right so you have yeah. a, a newsletter as well um mm -hmm. that you're making uh yeah so myself um uh crypto zombie um danny from crypto 99 hashoshi uh i'm forgetting people but there's a bunch of people that also are just like writers that are, are kind of collaborating with us we make a monthly newsletter. We put out all kinds of different content in it, which is the coolest thing. I started kind of as like a person in the background and I ended up kind of taking the whole thing on, which I have a tendency <laughs> to do. Um, 
but I love it because every month I get to work with all these people and we, and we have a designer, we have a copy editor and they help us put it together. And it's one of the most satisfying thing come the first of every month to have this awesome, beautiful newsletter publication thing to send out to people. It's a lot of fun. So that's been, we started that in November. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's been, it's been pretty awesome. It is uh, it's the blockchain brief. If anybody wants to go check it out, blockchainbrief.com. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Check it's it a out. Thing uh, that blockchainbrief.com. Let's let's let's. Um, I'll put the link up on my channel as well. Thanks, man. I mean, I think it's it's, it's super awesome. I, I took a look and I just like it's so much effort goes into it. Like you 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 have no yeah. idea how much effort goes into these things. And I'm like, dude, like you're you're doing this. You're doing their live streams. I think. Um, and you work as well, right? You work. Uh, yeah, I work forty hours a week. <laughs> like, how do you even manage? You know, like how? how uh, you... Trello. <laughs> Trello. <laughs> Trello saved my life. I have a Trello for my channel, and I have a Trello for the blockchain brief. Um, I have apps on my phone to remind me to check the app that has a list on it. Like I have all kinds of stuff. But yeah, no, it's it's kind of crazy. But I'm not good at being idle. So uh, even if I didn't have anything to do, I'd find myself in this situation again somehow. That's amazing, I mean, guys. Oh, Jack, definitely check out blockchain brief. I think um, I I took a stroll for it. I think um, it's a five dollar subscription, right? Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, lots of, um, lots of interesting information in there. Um, so I sent some photos over, so hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. You're in, you're in this month's yeah. edition for our crypto culture. We do like a beyond the computer. So events, things that people go out and do that aren't just kind of like trolling on Twitter, basically. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so, um, you kind of then fell into the deep end of crypto, right? So you're kind of doing this channel, um, how about like getting started? Like, um, do you find that um, it was hard to get started into the YouTube space? Like, um, you know, we were talk almost talked about like uh, even just getting OBS set up. One of the things I really wanted to pr <sighs> promote was um, to get more people into mo making more YouTube content. I think, um, like personally, I found a lot of the anger might even just be about um, from uh, people who just want to voice out some of their opinions. And I think it's uh, it's important to get emotions out. So when you started, mm -hmm. do you find it hard? Like, or how did you start your YouTube channel? So, well, if anybody is interested to go check out my first like six videos, it's bad. I'm in my kitchen, um, no green screen, camera's really far, mic is really far, you can tell. I had, I mean, I always did photography, but I'd never had any videography experience. Mm -hmm. And so it was just, one day I got a camera, the next day I got a green screen, then I got better lights, then I got a better microphone, then it just progressed and progressed and progressed. And the next thing I knew I had a computer. And if anybody is uh, thinking about starting a YouTube channel, do yourself a favor and don't buy a Mac because right now my stream is not working. I had like six streams in a row that worked perfectly and now this really? one's not working. So, so, so it really didn't yeah. work. So um, do you want me to stream into your channel then? Sorry, I, I should have totally offered that. Oh, uh, I don't know if you can, if you can do that, yeah. Um, uh, you use Restream, right? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't let know me how. think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, because I you mentioned that, and I thought I started working again. Sorry about that. No, it I didn't. Did it, no, up. it's not your not your fault. So, I just figured. Okay. So me there's second. no point in messing with it. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Um, if you give me your stream key, if you trust me with that, I can probably do something. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Just give me. Two. It's a. Uh, in Telegram. All right. Cool. Cool. Excellent. And this is YouTube or this is Restream? That's straight to YouTube. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. My. Uh... Right. My, I'm having bad luck here. Um, I find I find like uh, so just getting started on YouTube was actually pretty easy. So, mm -hmm. um, the the hard part was actually, um, to maintain it for me. So like yes, um, doing it consistently because YouTube you gotta you gotta kind of do it consistently. Um, I have to apologize to people and. Uh, we have three people watching on Facebook, so hi everyone on Facebook. Um, I'm gonna have to switch the stream over, so just um, apologies. Let me just see how to add a channel. Uh, custom RTMP. Uh, let me. Oh, fuck it. Let me just upgrade now. Sorry. Um, oh no, you're good. I'm the one with ongoing forever tech issues. I'm gonna have to probably get a PC for this if I wanna. I think I, I don't do it. I think. Um, it just 
the the only problem I think with a Mac is like um, um, just setting it up. But I actually found Macs being more reliable in the long run. Yeah, I'm wondering if it might just be my internet speed. Um, I had some guy come out and, and fix some issues I was having before, and you know, so I don't know. Yeah, because because sometimes when I see your video, it's like uh, a little bit grainy, so that probably is mm -hmm. to do with your internet speed. Let me just let me just um, get you on, and then let me. Um, sorry, if the apologies, everyone, but let me try no, to get you good. on. Um, is that so? Stream key is that? Um, can you also send me the um, RTMP URL? So just yep. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. I didn't even know you could do that. Um, you can definitely. Yeah, I'm gonna have to boost up my internet. I think. Okay, add channel. All right. Um, so now I should be on into your channel. Um, you probably have to turn yours off in that case. Yeah, I did. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, yep, it's it's streaming now. Is it streaming? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Yeah, I should have offered that ages ago. So um, apologize to everyone. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I thought it, it it started working again, and then um, um, just give me a second. No, I just have forever tech issues, unfortunately. Yeah, and and um, Alex was super nice. I had a very big tech issue at the start for like oh I, like i said i'm the most patient because i'm always experiencing problems so i'm never going to be the one to be like wow i can't believe you're having tech issues yeah um so so one thing i want to say when when i started youtube was um it was like the simplest setup ever <laughs> um i started off with just a, a phone just like like that basically yeah um i think it was it was kind of like it uh, you know technology has progressed to a point where you can do that like you just go outside if you find a quiet um area um, just using a phone and recording is um, absolutely fine. In fact, absolutely, um, and it looks pretty cool too. So mm -hmm. I actually totally, you know, recommend if you guys um, want to start on YouTube and something. It's not, it's not even about the fame or anything um, um, crazy like that. I think it was um, for me. It was just like sharing thoughts and just hearing opinions back. Some also yeah. sharing that adventure, right? Sometimes. Uh, you want to have someone to bounce ideas off, and YouTube is a great place for that. So mm -hmm. um, I definitely really appreciate um, everyone here, and also, you know, I um, encourage you guys to start. Like, um, it's it's not it's not as hard as you think. Once, um, unless you're doing live streams, in which case, yeah, then the hardest it. part is the tech. It is not the actual streaming. It's not the actual creation of content. Um, I found that I had really good experiences starting. I don't know if it's because I started when people were still like in a good place, but I got really great feedback and I got really great constructive feedback. Like, yes. okay, this video was better. I liked this better. I liked, you know, this audio or, Hey, can you talk about this type of content? I liked when you covered this last time, people are really cool about that. Um, and I'm, you know, I love reading the comments and being engaged with everyone because I find that that's the whole purpose, right? We're building communities. So that's why I have a Discord server, and I'm always on oh, Twitter really? and stuff There's like that. Discord server. Uh, yeah, I've got a big Discord server nice. that I, I love. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm always in there talking to people because that's the whole point. Um, I think of of making content to begin with. Mm -hmm. So, so when you're making content, let's talk a little bit about the future of crypto as well. So, like, you know, we we had. Um, so you, you came from an exploratory stage where you kind of said, okay, what's this funny digital money with these long strings? To now, um, you know, one year fully into this, now you're you're, you're making like newsletters, making videos. You're deep, yeah. you're, you're neck deep. Now we got like a few ideologies um, in crypto. I think um, it's important to point that out because a lot of times when we're fighting it, um, or arguing or debating, it's many times it's um, because we're we have totally different thoughts, right? There's the mm -hmm. Bitcoin maximalist camp, uh, which is you know, Bitcoin is the only coin. Um, it's the only form of currency. Then we have Ethereum guys who are like unicorns, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> who think, uh, <laughs> uh, who want to uh, create these decentralized applications that um, the elusive decentralized applications that no one has yeah. really ever seen working well or used <laughs> or used at all. Um, yeah. Um, then we have all these new high performance blockchains, which are like, oh man, we, we got to scale on chain with a million scaling um, techniques. Um, what what do you what do you subscribe to or do you subscribe to multiple ideologies? 
So I like the idea. So w- uh, let me preface this with: I got into crypto when ETH was seventeen dollars, and that's when oh, I started shit. buying it. Nice. Yeah. So to me, everybody I think has like their first love, right, for a project. Um, and I am partial to Ethereum for that purpose. I'm also partial because I I like the idea that I think that Vitalik is always seemingly trying to improve, better, grow, evolve. He never gets complacent, which I think is um, kind of the mark of someone who's very intelligent. I, I can understand the um, the argument about Bitcoin maximalism. I can see both sides. I don't agree with it personally. I don't mm-hmm. think that, I think that currently everything is kind of coupled with Bitcoin. So the success of Bitcoin price-wise is re- of a reflection in the success of altcoins prices, but I don't think fundamentally that they're coupled. So the success of Bitcoin being implemented as a digital cash somewhere, I don't think makes it any less, you know, bat and the basic attention in the uh, Brave browser any less useful or any less more adopted than they, you know, than they are now. Um, I think that there's a lot of really good altcoin projects out there. And unfortunately, there's a lot of Bitcoin maximalists who look at it and think that, you know, it's crap or whatever, because it's not Bitcoin. But I don't think that, (laughs) yeah, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think Bitcoin can serve the purpose Mm. that it wants to serve. And all of these other things can also exist and create their own kind of niche little area um what are your thoughts on that so uh, my thoughts actually um so before i started up completely into the exploratory stage everything can work it's gonna be great it's gonna be amazing then obviously you um you see some projects that just completely don't work because they've been tried and tested in other fields before um so i'm not a i'm very big on bitcoin because i feel like uh we need a decentralized currency that's uh, not controlled by the banks, funded by mm-hmm. big banks. And I think um, Bitcoin really fulfills that role and not many other projects fulfill that role, mostly because Bitcoin doesn't have a one team developing. Okay, fine. Core, you can say core technically is um, the, the only ones developing, but um, there's still other clients out there. There's still other people looking and there's more a lot of huge community of eyes on it. Um, that can always um, create something different. So I feel like uh, for me, Bitcoin has two advantages. One is because um, a lot of people have established Bitcoin centers around the world, um, in Mm -hmm. which case um, a lot of OTC desks, um, Bitcoin, there's a lot of liquidity and there's also a decentralized, like an actual decentralized um, development team, which makes it ideal for um, a currency that's not controlled by the banks. So in that sense, I feel Bitcoin has a very strong um claim to the throne there uh, but i definitely don't believe that it's the only application of um, whatever we have here um so i feel like um, i don't want to go down the maximus uh, rabbit hole i've i've always been you know uh, you know if you met tone you're like tone vase or or um even even one of the my introductory points um samson mo so i used to mm-hmm. actually um be in gaming with that guy so that guy is um uh, you know, if, even if you think think about it, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar. Excellion, the name, that's a video game engine. So he used to be a he, he still is a big um, game developer. So so he's a Bitcoin maximalist. So he, um, I started off uh, with that, and then I branched out, um, and then I'm now I'm like, okay, I see a lot of reason for Bitcoin, but I definitely see a lot of applications elsewhere. Um, just like recently, gaming was um, going back down um, to my roots. Um, we, we have so many developments here um, in the blockchain space that we can um, apply outside. Say, for example, we have um, easy transfer of value, ownership of value. We have exchanges coming through. And then we have even new efforts like, um, uh, you know, you guys know I'm doing two, like, uh, so one thing is um, I'm advising a project called Player. And we're always talking about this idea of, um, how do we uh, make gamers get paid for just playing video games, right? Like there's this whole network of say um, esports tournaments. So you say you are in um, in Counter Strike. Um, it, it's starting to get like to become a huge market, and people yeah. want to learn how to play video games. You know, they want to have mentors. They want to have coaches. They want to have competitions. We can do all of that. And we can transfer value between people with crypto. So I feel like there are so many different aspects that we can kind of take and branch off and um, use it to improve um, current systems. But there is always a limit um, to how much we can use. I think 
everyone yeah. once the moment you say that then you open the great doorway to to the infinite scams right then like oh let's like sell digital land i, I have no yeah. idea how that works um, well, that's like, you know, the obsession with tokenizing, like tokenize all the things, like everything needs to be token. And not everything gets better on the blockchain. Yes, no. the blockchain is amazing technology and it has a really good use case, but that doesn't mean that everything needs to be no, tokenized and put on the blockchain. Definitely not. It, it was like, so you, you, you say this um, and then you say, okay, you can create this. Um, we, we use this as good. We know this is bad and we don't use it. But what happens is that um, sometimes we see bad applications. Um, like so, for example, VR meeting. I think I think um, that would be a sexy application, but I don't think it will work with our current state of technology. Uh, <laughs> so there are so certain things that I feel works and doesn't work, and we should learn from other mistakes that's learned in other fields um, in terms of a platform building, community management. Um, there's all these things that we need to not repeat the same mistakes elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like. Um, we can branch it off just that we need to make sure that we don't make those make the same mistakes and then we can we have to treat it as experiment as well I think it's important to remember yeah. like it's still um, it's still very much an experiment it could completely fail um, right in our face right so you know take it with that grain of salt I mean if you, you like um, not financial advice, but never go in, all in on something. Like for me, like I always have a kind of a balanced uh, portfolio. Um, uh, but I feel like we definitely have some interesting stuff there. Like um, even recently, um, I'm not sure um, if you saw my digital cards collection. Uh, so I have these um, non-fungible token assets on the engine wallet. I think that was kind of... Yeah, I think you sent me... I think you sent me a couple because I have something about R. Why is the rum gone? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I think you posted it on Instagram, and I was like, "Man, that's really cool." And you were like, "Send me your ETH address." Because um, uh, Altcoin Buzz just sent me some of it. They're actually making a token for me on the Engine platform. Oh, nice, too. nice, nice. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about nice. that. So, um, this is my my one. This is a box money one. It's kind of oh, very universe. cool. Um, so, um, I made this new set. It took me like eight hours. Um, so, <laughs> so that's me. Um, that's a photo of me, and they all, I love it. Um, there's all the dry me. I've got a crypto Lambo. I made. I made four of these myself, and um, so this is my collection of non fungible tokens. Um, that's really cool. And the cool thing is, like, you can create a QR, and, and people can scan that and distribute that. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so there's like any you own it, right? You own this as an ERC eleven fifty five, which is kind of like an upgraded version of ERC twenty. Um, and you can transfer it. Um, we have projects like, say, for example, Wax. You know, um, they've been building up exchanges yeah. for gaming items for a long time. Once these things all get linked up, uh, like exchanging, uh, delivering, and then creating a gaming ecosystem like in player, then I think we can have like a gamers are going to have this crazy new toy to play with. So I'm really excited. Um, for I'm that. excited about that too. I think that um, out of all of the use cases, gamers, even who aren't involved in crypto yet, will be very interested and very open to being involved in crypto when they find out that they can transfer assets yeah. in game they can actually own stuff um i think that's going to be a huge market and it's definitely a really good use case for this technology um and i'm looking forward to being able to kind of play around with that too myself yeah hopefully like for me i'm, I'm super excited but I've, obviously I, I played a lot of shitty games um have you ever played eels nights <laughs> um no <laughs> all right so so I'll, I'll show you this is my other embarrassing thing um so so I was playing EO Knights, EOS Knights, um, and essentially this game consists of um, two gifs. Um, shit, can't you probably, <laughs> probably can't see that. So it's just like, um, it, it's like the most boring game in the world. Like, uh, like these guys just like animate, and that's it. Like, okay, fine, can't really show it, but um, it, it, do they are they fighting each other? Or are they just sitting there? They sit there with this animation. Just on repeat, <laughs> on, on loop. I mean, I mean, this must be like the cheapest game to make. Um, but okay, so so some of the cool things on there, like you get these knights, which are hope like technically um, they have items that are non fungible tokens. But then because they're on EOS, um, you can transfer them for for free, which is cool. Oh, okay. okay so so that's that cool. that that. that um, in this great war between EOS and Ethereum, I think there's some cool aspects of it where um, 
EOS works a little bit differently. So I, I took this as a way to learn EOS because um, you got to stake in, EOS, you got to create an account, stake in your EOS, and then um, if you have too many transactions, you got to stake more EOS. So it's kind of it's kind of a okay. very interesting kind of just getting to know the system there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, it was a great example for something that we can create. Obviously, the graphics are, are bad, and I think the gameplay is is too loopy. But I can see the bare basics where you can transfer these gear and items that you get for, you know, um, and you can do is like super micro transactions, like you're transacting cents, right? Which is that's cool. Um, something that's pretty much not been done before. And um, if you match that with like this huge exchange network that crypto was famous for, the fact that we have 24 hours exchanges and the fact that I'm pretty yeah. smashed today is because um, I stayed up until three last night uh, just looking at what's going on so yeah i saw you tweeting and i'm like shouldn't he be asleep i'm live streaming with him in like six hours yeah man i had like four hours of sleep so i'm like i'm pretty broken right now but um yesterday was just a, a insane day and and i saw the the full craziness of um crypto too right um because you know i've been like trying to talk about the engine project for a long time um and um, they recently pumped like crazy. So yeah. like just like you're at, at a point where like this is like super unreasonable. I think they just doubled their value like overnight. Like so like they shot up from um, I think it's ranked 150 to rank 50. And like, yeah, this is just not that's normal. from the uh, the the screenshot of the Samsung phone that was released. Right. And it looks like the engine wallet. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 And um, suddenly everyone's like, oh, crap. Um, they were kind of like the. Um, and it's kind of funny. That's what I'm interested in, right? Um, if you look at fundamentals, they've been developing, 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 but then no mm -hmm. one re recognized them. And then all of a sudden, suddenly like, people are like, oh, crap, like they <laughs> made a lot of stuff here. Yeah. Um, so obviously it's a little bit too crazy. I think like crypto, we got to tone it down a little bit. Like yeah. um, uh, there's still a lot of FOMO chasers. I think the, the next video I'm going to make is about FOMO chasing, which um, it, it doesn't work, right? It, it really doesn't work. No. It, it's like it, um, uh, you, you, you get in, but the, by the time you get in, it's already too late. Like people are asking me like, oh, should I buy Binance? Okay, not financial advice, but should I buy Binance? <laughs> I'm like, now, really? <laughs> like, Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, Binance is a cool exchange and all, but like they just pump like double, um, you know, wait for this um, uh, fever to die. But I mean, are there any favorite coins that you like, or are there any things that? Um, and I, I got a someone's a mic hog. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so so super sorry, Alex. I'm um, been hogging the mic a bit. Uh, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Normally, I'm the one that's hogging the mic, so it's actually kind of a nice. I, I sometimes get a, I get tired a little bit from talking so much on camera, so it's good to have an exchange back and forth. Um, I think. I mean, everybody, well, maybe not on your channel, but everybody on my channel knows that I love Cardano. That's one of my favorite oh, projects. Really? I'm looking at my... You had a recent yeah. interview with Charles, right? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. He's, um, I had interviewed him quite a while ago and then um, like a year ago. And then I interviewed him again recently just to kind of talk about like Shelly updates and stuff and like how the project is doing. Um, and the reason everybody asks, why do you love the project? Yeah, it, you know, s sticking out from other things. It's, you know, the third generation project, whatever, that's all just kind of like buzzwords. But for me, I come from um, a science background. Mm -hmm. I have a bachelor's degree in science. So um, peer editing and peer review and um, you know, being able to prove something and recreate something in a lab to me has always been like the ultimate mm. for truth. So the fact that they're taking so long to build um, a project getting and going under peer review and getting everything, um, you know, all their paperwork approved and everything to me is is what really sets them apart from everything else in the space. And yes, maybe they're taking a long time, but I'd rather, and I said this on the live stream with him, I, I'd rather wait, honestly, this is probably gonna be an unpopular opinion, but I'd rather wait years and have it come out and be flawless and never have a problem than wait a year and have it come out and fall apart. Because I think in this space, you have one shot, really one good shot before people lose their faith in you if you really drop the ball, because then you're tarnished. Um, and I don't know, I just, I think the fact that it's, they have put such an emphasis on research and development that that's kind of, it has a soft spot in my heart, basically. Charles really has that professor feel to him. He's like, he does. yeah. Um, he, he definitely wants to have create a legacy. That's when I, what I thought of him. Like he wanted to 
um, create, um, like, uh, really teach people too. I, I respect yeah. that. Um, but okay, so 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 you you have you like both Ethereum and Cardano. Uh, mm-hmm. That's like a like a big taboo thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess I've never. I, I just the thing is, is I don't follow a lot of like I follow day to day news, but I don't follow a lot of like the subculture mm. tribalistic stuff because I don't care. Mm. Um, and yes, obviously that is kind of a big taboo, but. I think that all like again, all these projects can serve a purpose and and they're obviously in a bit more competition with one another, but it doesn't mean that they both can't have different paths, right? Mm-hmm. At least I think that w- the space is still so extraordinarily small, so, so tiny. We have we there's so many things that we don't even know yet that are gonna happen. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's fair to say that direct competition in the space means that things are gonna get weeded out because we still have years of fourth generation and fifth generation projects coming out. So I don't know. I think it's just a matter well, of Well, we got generation time. inflation until like, I think we're like at the eighth generation now, according to some ads, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to roll your eyes at it, though. Yeah. I mean, like, um, we're not even finished building generation one yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. People just like to categorize things. It makes it, it easier for them it to does, understand. It does. It does. It um, does. It does. But it's also super misleading. But anyways, um, back to yeah, Cardano. Yeah. I think I think um, I definitely agree with you there. Um, there are some things that I really like about Cardano. Um, there are things I don't like. The fact that um, slow is actually quite bad in the tech space. That's what I've currently yeah, found. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, but in the finance space, I think Cardano might have a play. Like the fact that maybe. Um, you know, they're talking about Haskell as a programming language and um, financial people use that because it's, it could be formally verified. Um, mm-hmm. And we realize that formal verification is pretty important. Um, yeah. uh, think about it this way, right? Uh, we're doing super simple things like ERC-20s um, and some people still manage to fuck that up. Like, yep. it's like there's like eight functions in there. Like, <laughs> we had Beauty Chain last year where, like, um, some guy can, hacker can just create infinite chain, like, coins out of nowhere. Like, no oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> All the coins. Yeah. Uh, let's, um, it's just for, from a buffer um, over. Um, basically, when a number is too big, it, like, loops over. It's, like, ridiculously okay. stupid. Um, and these things technically should be in variable, should be catchable on a, on a better, um, uh, um, system. So right now, Ethereum's mm-hmm. improved a lot too. Like they're, they're they're fixing. There's also Viper, a new language coming on Ethereum. Uh, so Ethereum, I, I constantly think like they're trying to patch holes. But yeah, I yeah. I, I respect Cardano. Cardano, I think it's there's some interesting stuff. But hopefully, but when you talk to Charles, did you talk to him for like an an hour, <laughs> three hours? Yeah, he's um he is like <laughs> no one I've ever spoken to before. He just his brain. I don't even know how he retains the amount of information. He just spews useful information all the time. And it's really overwhelming because he's, he's so intelligent. And for the mo- in the beginning, he'll do a really good job, right, of like keeping me kind of on target. And I know what we're talking about. And then like he'll go into like real in-depth details. And I'm like, well, and I'm gone. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know what's going on. So um, then, you know, I try to dial it back a little bit too because obviously most people who are watching it aren't tech geniuses like him. So... Uh, but yeah, no, he's he's a he's a very fun person to speak to because he's so intelligent. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do get lost for sure. You're like, okay. Yeah. And he's in lecture mode, right? He goes into lecture mode. Yeah. He, like, well, he was a professor. He used to. I don't know if he does still teach or he used to teach. I think at the University of Boulder. Hmm. So makes sense if he goes into lecture mode. So, um, so what else makes you excited right now? Like, um, now that we're kind of in the depths of crypto winter, you can explore any project. What makes you excited? I think when people are kind of doing stuff that's a little bit different. So, like another project that I really like is Horizon because obviously they're doing, um, you know, the privacy features as far as currency goes, but they're also doing privacy features as publications go. So, I think that's really cool being able to write, share publications, share um, documents in an anonymous way that makes it verifiable, public, and whatever, um, making people kind of in a safe space if they want to share information that might be critical of other things or they could get in trouble for sharing, which I think is neat. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I, I'm looking through my portfolio now. Elastos is a project that I like um, and BlockNet too, but there's been, I actually just did a video on them recently with the whole finance spiel. Oh, is, that was hilarious. Yeah, that was that was strange. Well, a friend of mine who I've 
actually met in real life a few times and he's like the lead team lead for them. Um, he reached out to me and was like, Hey, do you want to cover this? So I trusted him enough and I worked with the team in the past that I felt like that they were being honest about the way they felt. And I still think that I don't know what's going on with the Binance thing, but I still think they could have handled it better. I think it's good. I mean, they used it as good PR. I think it was, um, you know, uh, whether or not Binance was stealing information. I think, um, yeah. I think it's uh, it's pretty cool that Binance does ask a lot of questions. Some of them did borderline on, you know, are these trade secrets? But obviously, yeah. they're smart. Like, I trust that they're smart people. They're like, if if, it, if they were trade secrets, they'd probably just say, you know what? Fuck off. You know, like, yeah. they would just probably... Hopefully. Uh, not hopefully i mean you know like 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 my example was like if you go into walmart and say say if coca-cola wanted to get listed on walmart um you know uh and walmart was like hey to be listed you got to tell us your secret recipe coca-cola would definitely say fuck off and just you know yeah oh absolutely <laughs> but anyways it's kind of funny to follow that um so 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 you you're um you're you're into quite a few projects then um you know um, how how do you set up your portfolio? Like, do you share that with your channel? Do you um, tell people? Um... Yeah. Well, if people ask. I'll tell them. You know, down to the very last thing I've invested in, wh what I invested in, and I used to have. I used to update this website that it would let you input um, how much and of what, and then it would just break it down in percentages and and not mm. show like dollar amounts. And people liked when I share that because I'm very upfront and honest about what I have or don't have. Uh, what I do video wise and stuff like that. Cause I don't, I don't care to be withholding. Um, but I don't really set my portfolio. I, that's the problem is, is I don't really have a, an organized manner of doing things. If I like a project, I try to get it at a good price and then I hang on to it. Exactly. Like um, that's exactly the same thing I have. Like you're like, Oh, this is cheap yeah. right now. Let me go buy some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> usually <laughs> the way I operate. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, exactly. It's same. It's exactly same thing with me. And then, like, I've always yeah. tried to make. Um, I made this Excel sheet about what I have, and then a breakdown. Oh, and I do that too. Um, and then it got so out of date. I'm like, I don't want to show this. I'm like, ugh. Um. Yeah. But you know, like, um, uh, um, pretty much the same thing. Like, um, and and I think I ha I'm guilty of um just going on some exchanges and just saying like okay look just um load an app up and then when i'm on the bus i'm like hey what's cheap let me sort by like lowest yeah. price i'm like oh this is like this looks pretty yep. cool um been trying not to do that because like obviously you got to do a lot of uh research yeah. um and well normally i just try to buy like the stuff that i already have in my portfolio if it's cheap i'll buy more of it like horizon mm -hmm. um i've been been accumulating obviously cardano i'm accumulating um Elasto dipped pretty low. I was buying that. I, part of the reason I haven't shared my portfolio recently is because if I'm being frank, I haven't really bought anything in quite a while. Mm. Um, it's hard to balance the job, the newsletter, the the channel, and also paying attention to prices and news and Binance listings and <laughs> charting. And like, I can't, I, one of those things has to take a hit once in a while. So whether it's like, maybe there's a week there, I don't make a video or there's like a two or three week span. I don't pay attention to prices and I don't buy anything. So it's like kind of dependent on what my priority is for the time being. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, uh, like you have way too much stuff. I mean, um, like when I talk, spoke to you, I'm like, dude, this person has to be like so passionate about crypto to, yeah. to like, if you told me to do a newsletter now, I'll be like, nope <laughs> like fuck that shit i'm out uh, well i kind of felt in the beginning i was going to be like that and then as i got more and more involved and started to like really piece it together and then also i got to see like what it looked like it's it's something i never thought i was going to like but i genuinely really enjoy doing it so it really doesn't even feel like work it's actually something i want to do mm, thankfully that's good um yeah and so i mean sometimes depending on the kind of content i'm making the channel can sometimes feel like work, sometimes feel like pleasure. It's really, really dependent it's, on. I mean, you make content a lot. So how do you deal like on the days that you're just not up for it? Do you just not do it? Um. Okay. So yeah. Um. Let me just give a shout out to Crypto Tom who said, um, December 2017 was the last time I updated my portfolio. So sorry, guys. Um. I will try to update <laughs> it. But um, in terms of dealing with content, I think, um, I have a nasty habit of being a perfectionist. So like every time mm -hmm. I record. Um, I play back and I spent like, you know, two hours editing. Um, and then uh, um, I tell Crypto Daily that and he's like, two hours? Push, like, I'll top you with six hours. I'm like, yeah, I, know. He, I, I asked him the same thing and I was like, excuse me. He's like, it's on the low end, it's like three. I'm like, what? <laughs> what the 
but like that's that's insane right so yeah so there are yeah. days um that i don't do videos um i did take a few breaks um there are times where um you just really don't want to do a video like yeah. um there's once i just didn't want to go on camera i'm just like 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 remove that camera i'm like i don't, I don't want to see anyone i don't want to show my face to anyone yeah. um but i think i think um I recently stopped forcing my force myself to not be a perfectionist. I think that helps a lot. Um, yes, just it does. just start making mistakes. I think it. Um, I think it, it's cooler, and also it's just a little bit easier. And also on your, especially on your your psyche, um, just let the mistakes happen. Don't cut them out. Um, you know, just care about talking about things people want to hear or want to mm -hmm. topics that people um care about. And then um, the other one is just take a big break once in a while. Like that's, that's yeah. Like when's the last time you take a taken a break or have you not, not stopped at all? So in the in the year and a half or so that I've been making content, I think I've only taken two like legitimate breaks. But one of them didn't even count because I recorded two videos ahead of time and had them oh, uploaded. Wow. So when I was on vacation, I could just release them. Um, oh, that's really good planning. More, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I, it, it, I just felt guilty because I was going to be gone for a while, but. More recently, my brother just had his first child uh -huh. and he lives in Florida. So I spent 12 days in Florida and I didn't yeah. really do much That's of anything, great. which great. was awesome. Yeah, it was really necessary. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, it's like, and, and just turn off social media, turn off your phone. There was, um, yeah. I was in Thailand in December. I was, that was really great. Um, yeah, I bet. Um, Thailand, um, the internet there was terrible. So, so, um, just, just like, uh, just turn off everything and just like mm -hmm. lie there by the beach. Um, did some rock jumping, just jumping off rocks. Oh, nice. Um, that was great. Um, yeah, th there's, um, so taking a break out once in a while and I'm also going to the States soon. So I'm going to go to GDC. Oh, cool. Um, so San Francisco, mm -hmm. where are you based right now, actually? Uh, I'm really close to New York City. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Okay, the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's cold and snowy and miserable here right now. Ah, oh, that sucks. Um, yeah, I'm really excited yeah, to suck. to go there. I mean, Omar, I think it's in near LA, so hopefully, um, meet up with yeah, he is. Um, all those cool crypto and um crypto people. I think um mm -hmm. it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Um, um I think yeah, I think just... California is a beautiful place. So you're stuck in the snow. That sucks. Yeah, most most months out of the year up here are pretty cold. Oh man, I I used to live in Montreal. Um, mm -hmm. That's like north, and I was like, no. Do you have to dig your car out of the snow? This morning. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that yeah, look I on your to, face well, was like to, this morning. Yes. Well, I didn't have to dug. I didn't have to shovel out my car so much as I had to shovel out my driveway because I couldn't get out for work. So yeah, I did that. Um, but this, I really can't complain. This winter has been super mild. It. it we really only have gotten a couple of snowstorms, um, so it could definitely be worse. Uh, so I really shouldn't. I don't want to say that and then have it like be snowing yeah, for the next three months. Don't jinx it. Don't, jinx, like it. don't yeah. jinx it. Right. So, so you you actually came from work today. How do you do yes. a live stream after work? I mean, you must be like dead. Well, today I, I was exhausted, so I was definitely kicking myself for a little while. I'm like, oh, I should have done it tomorrow or whatever. But well, it's like like the hour leading up to it, I don't really want to just in anything, whether it's the video or a live stream most of the time i'm like i don't really want to do it and then once i get started i'm fine it's just like anything else that's crazy though like like do take a break i think you deserve it i think you gotta you gotta say like guys it's like um, yeah i will I, pro I probably will at some point yeah um so i think um should we end up the stream soon like if there's anything we sure. want to talk about that um or uh, let's do questions and answers i guess q a okay uh, let's see if i have anything in the comments mm -mm -mm. Somebody asked me what my next review might be on. Um, I think I actually, funny enough, I'm going to do a, a non-sponsored review, just a review I'm curious about on Engine because I, I like the project and I want to learn more about it. Um, and then when is my next blooper reel? When, when, I have, uh, when I have enough content to make a blooper reel because they're not fake. They're actual cuts from Oh, yeah. I saw, I saw them on your Instagram, right? Uh, you have a blooper yeah. reel on. Yeah. Oh, man. It's kind of funny. I like um, we had a comment saying uh, this is interview getting very personal. Yeah, why not? Like, why, why don't we talk about who's behind everyone? Um, yeah. Um, I get because you film it. Like, do you have a studio right now? Like, uh, are you in a studio room or? 
Um, so I'm actually in my living room. My living room's divided into two areas. It's the couch and the TV and then YouTube. So I have uh, a table behind my couch with all my stuff on it and a green screen. And then my living room with all of my like regular stuff. So everyone in my life knows obviously that I make content. So they're not surprised when they come over and they see all this stuff. It's like, what's this stuff? My place is just yeah. way too tiny. Like I have to like find these like weird angles. Um, yeah. Um, people say that my place looks like a bathroom. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. So 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 I recently did use camera tricks to hide the bathroomy aspect of it. Um, um, this yeah, like, um, I think I think um, just get like if if people want to get started, just like buy a webcam and start. I think it doesn't have to be professional. But uh, no, when, that's what I use. Yeah, because that's what this is. I have a four K webcam. Yeah, exactly. Because like um, that's what that's what I was gonna ask you about. Because like. Uh, when you look, when you did your blooper reel, it seemed like you had like a professional studio. I'm like, dude, like, did you, did you rent out a studio to do this? Or <laughs> like, it, it looks like a, cause you had like really good lighting and stuff as well. Like I have t two big like box lights and then I have uh, one of those like halo lights. Um, and I used to use like a really nice professional camera, but to be honest, like crypto daily does, but it's such a fiasco for me to get it um, focused to make sure the white balance looks good. And I just said, forget it. So I bought, um, a really nice webcam threw it on top of my computer and I record usually myself and then my screen on another instance. Mm. So I have like two video feeds. Um, so if I'm doing like a review or something like that, I have more than one video. I fight if I, I want to use it and that's pretty much it that, and I have a, somebody off my wish list cause they were a saint bought me a, a blue Yeti. So I have a oh, brand nice. new it's nice. yeah. blue Yeti, which I've been using. Yeah, cause sound is like uh, one of the most important aspects of it. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I bought this. This was like the biggest waste of my time. Uh, it was like spent like 20 hours mulling over how to connect this up. <laughs> like it's like yeah. ridiculous. Like um, I think Blue Eddy is like really good. Um, yeah, I love it. I've had um, really good experience with it and it sounds really good. It's definitely an upgrade from my other mic that I was using, which was kind of like a no name one. So I'm happy with it. Yeah, we got a comment here said um, Crypto Broker says uh, we follow you on Steam it at Crypto Candor uh, and now uh, ready to support with your upvote. Awesome. Cool. Nice, nice. Uh, Thanks, guys. Thanks. Uh, we got Box Mining. Don't get nervous with her, man. We're chilling, man. We're chilling. Um, I mentioned. Uh, Vention MG Toe says, What the hell heck is a Blue Yeti? Blue Yeti is um, a really cool mic. Um, Yes. Um, so yeah, someone got that for you. That's that's really cool, man. Uh, yeah, it's super super generous. Uh, we just have a um, Dean says, "What just happened to BTC? Did the price go down? Is that is that what happened, or did the price go up? Oh, huh. oh wow, it dumped to to three thousand five hundred. That's crazy. Oh, huh. somebody wants to know if you are an active trader." Um, no, Ashley. So, um, I trade, but on, oh crap, I almost messed up my, oh wait, that, that kind of really just messed up. All right. Anyways. Um, so, um, I have, a, so in terms of portfolio and everything, so I have a gambling account, <laughs> like, let's be honest, I'm just going to call it that. So I have an account where I have a very small amount of crypto on where I just like, um, if there's any impulses, let me just get it out of my system. Like, if you yeah. want to go gambling, let's call it the gambling account, and and, and that's it. Um, then I have like these ledgers, um, or trez treasure ledger, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all like um, these are like more permanent. So like, um, like they hold up my crap. So yeah, um, I've got mine right over here too. So I don't touch them. Like <laughs> I, I I try not to touch anything in here. I'm like just like these are my long term hodls. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, um, don't touch this. Um, and, and it, it helps, right? Because once you lock these up in a safe, um, and I do recommend, um, and, and I should not tell people what I do with these things because obviously, um, there's always a security risk as well. Um, but, um, I locked them up and, you know, I do too. And then you don't, you don't, you don't actively day trade because, uh, one of the things I found in crypto as well, especially recently is, um, the, that you can't predict what's going to happen in a market because the market has such a thin uh, trade volume. Like we we see these big yeah. numbers on Coin Market Cap, but they're all fake, right? We see we see people just exchanges just printing off volume, and what you realize is like that tether, <laughs> tether. Uh, but have have you experienced this? That there are some exchanges that uh, when you try to go there and sell, you can't sell it. Like 
I'm not sure. You, yeah, you, yeah, you go to yeah for like smaller cap projects. You go on and there's actually no liquidity. Yeah. Like they'll say, yeah. um, oh, um, three million uh, volume, like USD worth of volume transacted um, per day, and like there's like you put one dollar of it up, <laughs> it doesn't get sold, like, even if it's like uh, way below the next bid price. Like, you, you, then you just realize, oh shit, all these trades are happening off order books, which is like the scariest thing in the world. Um, so yeah, like right now, I think that's happening with a lot of coins, and even with Bitcoin, the our traded volume, I think it's like. Um, we have these just these paper thin walls both sides, um, mm -hmm. and unfortunately that means um, it's very hard to it's even harder to predict because someone, especially with a large volume, can move it up or down. So that's why I'm just like I don't touch it, I don't actively day trade, but I do I do have a gambling account. That's what I'm gonna admit to. <laughs> oh, so somebody wants me. This is actually a genius idea. I don't know why I didn't think of this. Have you heard of the project library? Library. Yeah. No. I think I heard okay, of it, so but I, I don't like, tell it's me. It's like it a decentralized YouTube, but it's a desktop application and they're in the process of creating other things. I've like slowly but surely converted everybody to getting on it. It's an awesome uh, place to upload. People tip you. It's like Steam it, but it's own platform, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you should check it out if you're bored and you want to download it. Excellent. So it's desktop. Okay, library. Um, is this spelled weirdly mm -hmm. like L Y B. Yeah, L L yeah, L B R Y. Okay, I think I heard of it before then. Um, uh, but I yeah. I didn't, never went into it like Yeah, no, I love it. I, outside of like um putting stuff on YouTube, I always put all my stuff on library and it's gotta be one of my favorite user interfaces as far as like a actual desktop application goes for a blockchain based really? project. Okay, cool, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Mm -hmm. Um that sounds great. Um I think yeah, just having like why not, right? Like I think even Yeah. Um even like steam it i think it was kind of funny like so you're on steam it too right like that's the mm -hmm. one i used to use for uh there was a project called dtube being built on there um, yeah i use dtube and dlive yeah and then you know, there was a bit of drama but okay let me just check library library is for mac os right so you have a mac os yeah you can do mac or um pc excellent okay i'll check it out cool 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 yeah let's see um i think i'll just take two more answers and we'll call it um, all right cool library is progressive um yeah um, um we got hobo media says well every female um, content producers get hit on constantly seriously chill peeps like being a female in this space i mean um uh, unfortunately my guys are like you know um uh, not unfortunately my guys but like a majority of my audience is like i think 98 percent male <laughs> so is mine so so like how do you find being a female in this space like do, do you feel like it's um it's uh, something that's lacking like more female members um in crypto or i i think there's actually i mean obviously there's more men in the space duh um that goes without saying but i do think that there are more female and females in the space than people think there are mm -hmm. i mean i follow quite a few people on twitter um and there are a few crypto youtubers i mean like heidi um you know, Wendy O yeah. off the top of my head, I can think of, and and there's a bunch of other people and I'm blanking and I feel bad because I'm not calling out their names, but there's a lot of women in the space. And, and my experience so far is that there's definitely more coming in slowly. Women usually are a little bit less of risk takers, I think, mm. and at least financially. And so most people are probably taking their time to research and really understand something before they kind of jump feet first. Um, but as a female, yeah, I mean, I, I might get like some comments here and there that are like off color, but for the most part, people are pretty respectful. I'd say maybe one one out of every 15 comments to 20 comments, I'm like, and eh, that, that could have done without that. But for the most part, people are, it's more about the tech. It's more about what I'm talking about and not about the way I look, which is ideally what I'm shooting for. Um, obviously not everybody wants to follow that kind of train of thought, but I've had quite, I've had, I'll put it this way. I've had better experiences than I expected I would. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely like comments. I think should be like moderated. Um, yeah. But yeah, apparently, um, I think I think it's like if you go to meetups, it's actually a bit better. Uh, meetups, yeah. there, there's uh, more um, more representation. But on YouTube, sometimes you know people, I don't know, like we 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 need more we need more like a balance of everyone here. I mean, you know why? I agree. Why not? Right. Um. Okay, so I think um, just looking at other comments. Um, think, do you have any other comments? On I don't really side? have. No, nope. not really. Okay, 
So last comment. I think I want to ask a question for you as well. So do you go to events often? Do you set up events? I don't set up events. I will. So I've had, uh, I've had a couple events that I've been to that have sort of not been what they publicized to be. So when I got there, it was like a bit of a letdown. I would love to go to events that are worth it. The problem is, is obviously work. Sometimes they're in the middle of the week. And also I don't really want to spend, you know, like consensus, like a thousand dollars to go to a conference. I would love to go, but I don't have that kind of money laying around to be spending on conference tickets. So um, if there were meetups locally and I knew of like one or two people who were going, I would go. I won't just go kind of like coldly without knowing if there's going to be someone there that I at least recognize. Yeah. So, well, hopefully, I'm not sure consensus this year, but hopefully um, there's a conference that we'll be all at. I think like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We should like, like there was uh, this one time when Omar, um, you know, Teal Bear, like Arcane Bear, he was wanting to set up a, this event for for people in the crypto space that are, are cool, like not ico shows and stuff but i'm not yeah, yeah, i'm not sure if um not sure if he uh, will carry out with that but um hopefully yeah, sometime let this me year know it'll be cool um but yeah For sure um yeah hope you guys all enjoyed this episode um much more casual just more personal uh discussion yes. with everything um and you know i uh, hope you guys can follow um, alex's channel crypto candor um and you know be cool in crypto all right <laughs> All right. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, let's, just, uh, let's end the stream there. Thank you guys. Thanks guys.